Hi, I'm Christina Lowen, and I just want to begin by saying a word of thanks to the Canadian Art Summit Steering Committee for this wonderful invitation to be with you here today. And hi, I'm Amit Mehta, and we're so honored to present you today to tell you a story about our vision for stimulating innovation in the arts. It's a story of an experiment, a mashup that brought together the ITC digital sectors with the art sector and enabled a cohort of 10 arts projects to be accelerated by a cross-sectoral, know-how-led, pace set experience that we called Lean Performing Arts. And we were so excited about the results of our, and the results of our experience and our feedback that we've embarked on sharing our learnings and our <clears throat> insights across Canada through our startup called the Arts Accelerator. It's a national movement to stimulate uh, <clears throat> the, arts the arts ecosystem to gather and engage local communities in a, in a flexible but structured process for upcoming new and established arts, artists and programs. And it turns out our, start, our, our, um, our collaboration is also a bit of a mashup. <laughs> I'm a venture capitalist, a serial entrepreneur, and a corporate innovation game designer. Uh, and I'm the executive director of opera.ca. This is the National Association for the Opera Sector in Canada. At Opera CA, I've often looked outside the arts for leadership lessons for the opera sector on how to manage high levels of change and uncertainty. At opera meetings, we have looked at the ecological framework of resilience and systems thinking. We've explored the world of social innovation and movement building, explored the role of capitalization for change financing, and most recently, the world of tech and start startup acceleration. Um, I've spent the last two decades outside of Canada uh, it's been involved with various aspects of innovation, um, understanding customer requirements as a product manager, investing in tech startups as a venture capitalist, and being, being a serial entrepreneur. But upon returning to Canada, I became curious about how to take these lessons um, to stimulate innovative, innovative outcomes within established industries and markets, using business models and um, formats across various sectors. I've worked with organizations like Deloitte to understand how to utilize these ideas to build an inter internal innovation competition, um, seat of the International Ballet Competition, and most recently educated healthcare leaders on how to use internet-based technologies, knowledge sharing tools, and business models to affect what they're doing. So incubators and accelerators, they seem to be becoming ubiquitous in many, many sectors. And one of the best examples of, uh, of, such, of one of these incubators is called Y Combinator. It's Silicon Valley's darling. And its motto is to make something people want. Semi-annually, they gather a, a cohort of 100 startups and develop their nascent ideas into innovative solutions and products over three months. And what makes Y Combinator so successful is not just its funding. It's a combination of selecting great teams of potential, of providing a lean framework for progressing ideas uh, quickly and iteratively, and most importantly, supporting these startups with an experienced ecosystem of mentors, founders, business experts, and angel investors. As you may be aware, Y Combinator has produced nearly 1,000 newly funded companies, and eight of them are valued at more than a billion dollars. They include the likes of Airbnb, Reddit, and Dropbox. So can you imagine if we took this thinking and applied it to the arts? I did. <laughs> Especially after reading this book. This is The Lean Startup. It's a New York Times bestseller by Eric Ries. And as it turns out, The Lean Startup is the core methodology behind many of these accelerator programs. But what is Lean? Well, Lean is a customer-focused process that favors experimentation over elaborate upfront planning. It focuses on finding an audience, an audience first before large amounts of capital are spent in uh, the development of any great idea. It provides a feedback loop that helps you build a hypothesis and gives you a framework for experimenting and testing your assumptions, making small changes along the way. Small changes are called iterations, and big changes are called pivots. So why lean arts? Well, throughout my career, I've always maintained that the arts contribute to civic good and that maintaining relevance in society is dependent on delivering value to audiences, customers, and end users. As our market changes dramatic, uh, demographically, culturally, and technologically, so must the arts sector. Simply put, we need to be in a state of constant change. This is our innovation imperative. 
but innovation involves risk. And risk implies failure. And failure is expensive. And let's face it, it's a waste of money. And in the arts, we have no money to waste on failure. So I ask myself, could applying lean to the arts help make our limited funding and resources work for us smarter and with more successful outcomes? In true lean fashion, I set out to answer this question with a test. This is a picture from uh, Lean Opera. It was held in Toronto at the Canadian Opera Company as part of our annual meeting of members in 2013. We invited a hybrid keynote workshop from Mars, a regional innovation center in Toronto, to present key lean concepts to our members. They were well received, but overall the experiment was too small and too short for validated learning. We needed a bigger test. Version two, the lean performing arts. We ran the lean performing arts uh, in the dead of winter, <laughs> January, February, it was really cold, 2015 in Toronto. It was a partnership with the Performing Arts Alliance, Mars Discovery District, the Regional Innovation Center, and the Working Group, a leading digital agency in Toronto. It was made possible by a Leadership for Change grant from the Canada Council for the Arts. Lean Performing Arts was a pre-accelerator incubator program to identify and de-risk the most promising new ideas in the performing arts. It ran once a week for six weeks, and we had 10 teams participating. They ranged from disciplines including opera, dance, design, chamber music, and theater. Only some of them were startups. The rest were, were not. The entire process was supplemented by a team of mentors, uh, 10 uh, mentors on the technology and arts side. We focused on three key lean concepts. The business model canvas, customer discovery, and minimum viable product. The first stage, the business model canvas. And this is actually a lean version of the business model canvas. It's a portable compact storyboard of all your assumptions around a new idea, product, or service. This is a very important document as it becomes your roadmap in future testing stages. <clears throat> Here is an example from one of our teams from the Lean Performing Arts. They hypothesized in their problem solution set, which is the left side of the canvas, that their members were isolated and felt, uh, well, felt isolated because they're often working alone. They're affected by the high cost of gear and software and highly valued peer-to-peer -peer support and mentorship. Therefore, their unique value proposition, that's the block in the middle, uh, was the development of a center, a physical co-working space where their members could come together. In effect, a building. The second stage in the Lean Performing Arts process was customer discovery. Customer discovery is your first opportunity to begin testing, uh, validating your assumptions in your business model canvas. There's a famous saying, get outside the building, by Steve Blank, who's a pioneer of the lean startup movement in Silicon Valley. This is your chance to go to where your target audience is and to talk to them. Get to know them, understand their challenges and their problems. And we do this through uh, asking non-leading questions. The goal in this stage is to conduct 20 interviews. And it might seem simple, but it's really, really hard. So for example, using uh, the, the team that I referred to before, after the customer discovery process, they pivoted. Their idea completely changed once they went out and tested their assumptions on the canvas, just by asking the right questions. So for example, this team, instead of asking their members, do you feel isolated, uh, disconnected, and affected by the high cost of gear, so thereby <laughs> asking the questions that they've identified as their problem, Instead, they asked a different question. They said, what are the biggest challenges you face in your work that, if solved, could radically help you work better? And the answer was cash flow. The third step in the process is the minimum viable product. And you probably can't read that. What is the smallest thing you can do to learn? <laughs> this one was really tough for our teams, because many of them were really small. And some of them were producing opera on less than $10,000. And they were telling us, how much more minimal can you get than that? But the minimum viable product is not the smallest version of your idea. It's the fastest way to get through the feedback loop with the minimum amount of effort. It's the smallest unit that you can learn from. So for our team who learned that their main challenge was not isolation, but cash flow, they completely transformed their, their initial idea from a building 
to an app that helped their members manage expense report reimbursements. This flyer is their minimum viable product with the response mechanism to measure interest, establish demand, and test their new hypothesis. Here's another example of an MVP. Hit Play is an online portal for the discovery of new online plays in podcast format. They created as their MVP a landing page covered in thought bubble teasers about the content of some plays with a sign-up mechanism to find out how they end. This provided measurable levels of interest as well as potential new early adopters. And the final week of the program is the big demo night. The cohorts get a chance to pitch their ideas to an audience full of peers, sponsors, funders, <clears throat> and um, mentors. And the buzz even caught the attention of CBC Spark, who came to report on it. Having been with the team for five weeks, I was really curious to see uh, what they were going to do with their presentations, as I've seen them struggle and grow throughout that process and really stretch their thinking. Um, and I've been to a number of pitch nights. Uh, in fact, I'd been at the ne demo night for Startup Next, which is another incubator, similar incubator for the startup community, just five weeks earlier. And I have to say that you know, listening to the pitches uh, for that night from these arts organizations, they really kicked ass and, and truly captured the essence of their projects with both creativity, and clarity, and artistic style. I, I really was impressed. And you know, it's one of the big reasons why uh, I continue to work with Christina on this project. Um, so what do, they, what do the cohorts learn uh, from our program? They really did stretch their thinking and understanding in tangible and valuable ways. Um, every team basically changed their thinking uh, from a target market perspective, the problem solution, um, uh, solu problem solution sets, and even the venues they might you know, think about operating in. One of the teams actually completely tanked their idea because they didn't actually understand their target market and the value that they were trying to provide to that, uh, that, that, um, that cohort or that, that market. And one of the most important things is the teams were helping each other out. They were really learning from each other. And that's one of the really important things about these experiential experiences that we're trying to design, that we learn from each other and from the mentors um, and the advisors in the group. And the program created nine market-tested, de-risked, fund-ready ideas. So we also had some learnings. Uh, most specifically in looking at the tools we were using, we need to develop an arts-specific canvas, something that speaks to the multiple bottom lines that we're responsible to in the arts, including sustainability, civic engagement, as well as artistic success. We also need to find language that's more specific to the arts. So for example, pain, <laughs> finding the pain is not often a, you know, an expression that you, you might find really relevant uh, to the arts when you're talking about it, the intrinsic uh, um, need for, for what you're looking to be fulfilled through an artistic experience. As well, in the accelerator world, Demo Night is all about investment. It's your opportunity to pitch your project for essential support in the form of time, expertise, and money. We need to cultivate a community of venture philanthropists to support arts projects at this early stage. And lastly, we need to cultivate and further develop business and mentorship support, as this was highly valued by all of the teams. So with these learnings, we're ready for the next step, iteration three. So version three is the arts accelerator. Since we had a great successful program, we want to repeat this. But more so, we recognize that the Lean Startup is a movement. There are many movements in other sectors, such as lean in technology, lean for social good, lean in health. So we want to put lean principles into the hands of every community in Canada to run their own lean arts program. We will accomplish this through a movement, the Arts Accelerator, with the goal to empower and activate community engagement and creativity using lean. To date, we've identified two regional partners. We're coming soon to a city near you, and we're looking for partners. Um, so just before we conclude, we really wanted to bring this back to you, some of the largest arts organizations in the country, um, and remind you that Lean Startup is not just for startups. These tools can be used uh, with your existing teams to focus, optimize, and de-risk new ideas and projects. So you can model your idea and take a look at how it's going to get affected over time by, by these threats that are coming into the marketplace. On customer di di discovery, you know, in the arts, as in many, many industries, in fact, almost every uh, project I've worked on, there's a disconnect between solving our own problems and our customers' problems. So remember to go out 
<clears throat> after you've developed your value proposition to go test it. This is the step where you have the most unexpected learning. Go ask your customer uh, what they're <coughs> thinking. And don't try to prove that your idea has merit, but spend time listening, asking provocative questions, looking for inconsistencies and finding the friction. This is where the learning really is. And finally, on minimum viable product, you know, remember you don't have to build your whole, whole, whole product or service to, to, to test it in the marketplace. You know, build, what is the smallest thing that you can do? Can you create a flyer? Can you create a brochure? Can you create a landing page that establishes demand and tests, tests the value proposition in the marketplace? And of course, participating in community gatherings like the Arts Accelerator enables you to create a pipeline of projects, ideas, and people fresh. So in closing, you know, the arts is an essential part of all developed, essential to all developed countries. It represents an intrinsic part of communities that in a world of differences and diversity helps us understand each other and define our Canadian heritage. It's a significant portion of the GDP and a world-class export for Canada. So we feel it's incumbent to create a rich, vibrant ecosystem for innovation and development in the arts. We want to develop a pipeline of the best projects, hyper-localized, but leading to the potential for local, national, and international success. And to share what we've learned and developed across the nation, open source and open heart. So we leave this with you. How can we be of better service to you? And how can we collaborate together? We've had the chance to speak with a, you know, a number of you, and there's so many amazing ideas and potentials for supporting and collaborating with each other here today. So come talk to us. We're here to listen, and we'd love to help. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>